Carmen Miranda came to symbolize Brazil for the outside world, though she'd been criticized at home for becoming too westernized. Her sophisticated, light-hearted songs had little to do with the everyday struggles of many ordinary Brazilians. They found a new hero in the northern countryside, inland from Recife. O meu cabelo já começa prateando, mas a sanfona ainda não desafinou. Luiz Gonzaga was the exponent of a new style, forró, that swept across Brazil in the 1940s from the remote northeast, where his songs are still played by musicians who knew him. Eu não tenho nem palavra para falar sobre Luiz Gonzaga, porque Luiz Gonzaga foi um tudo para nós e ainda, ainda para a gente ainda ele é vivo. Luiz Gonzaga é como o Elvis Presley do Nordeste. Ele é o rei. <risos> Ele é o cara que formatou, uh, ele inventou a, a nova música nordestina, acho que é a partir da década, eu não, não tenho certeza, mas acho que é a partir da década de 40, 50 talvez, acho que 40 ainda. Ele inventou o um estereótipo do nordestino com toda aquela roupa de couro, com as cores. Só foi na velha do falo furado, só faz fum, só faz fum. Mesmo assim o cavaleiro faz um refugado e o coração da morena faz tum tum. O sanfoneiro animado puxa o depois de tomar um gole de rum. E aja fum, aja fum, aja fum, forró com essa fome, é forró número um. Luiz Gonzaga, you can compare him with uh, Bob Marley in, in reggae, because he really did the, the melting of the style, you know? And it became very well known because he recorded it. It played on the radio in the 40s, 50s. So he came up with a new rhythm, popular rhythm. It was kind of the same Bob Marley did with uh, reggae in Jamaica. Luis Gonzaga was the son of a farm worker whose life was transformed after he'd appeared on a radio show in Rio. It was hosted by Ari Barroso, but Gonzaga proved that Barroso's nationalistic samba could be matched by dance music from the northern countryside. For her, music didn't become something rival to samba, but let's say something as big as samba inside Brazil, but not outside Brazil. Of course, samba had Carmen Miranda, for example, as a, a you know s something that promoted samba, even in Hollywood movies. But for her, is as much from the people of Brazil, from the real people of Brazil, as samba. This was a new era of migration, as workers from the poor farmlands of the northeast moved south to the cities of Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo to look for work. Luis Gonzaga wrote dance songs and sang about the lives of the migrants and those they left behind. <laughs> Ele representou muito bem o espírito do nordestino, uh, do imigrante que saía, que saía daqui para ir para São Paulo, para os grandes centros urbanos. Uh, 
uh, das pessoas que tinham que conviver com os problemas da seca, com a injustiça social, que aqui no Nordeste é muito mais forte do que no Sudeste. Então, além de ser um ícone musical, ele também é um ícone social. O fole After Luis Gonzaga died in 1989, a statue was erected just outside Recife, the capital of his home state, Pernambuco. It marks the start of the Luis Gonzaga Highway. Gonzaga had reminded Brazil's city dwellers of the depth of the music that existed out in the countryside, and shown that music was as important for the outlying regions as it was for Rio, as a way of expressing their views and problems. And with Fojo, there had been no attempt by the government to control the music. Gonzaga led the way for other Northeasterners, like Jackson do Pandero, an exponent of another Afro-Brazilian rhythm, Coco, and best known for chiclete con banana, bubblegum and bananas, that poked fun at the American lack of understanding of Brazilian music. Mas eu sou bom, tu me papi no meu samba Quando o tio Sam tocar um tamborim Quando ele pegar no pandeiro e no zabumba Quando ele aprender que o samba não é rumba Aí eu vou misturar Miami com Copacabana Chiclete eu misturo com banana E o meu samba vai ficar assim Aí eu quero ver a confusão Getulio Vargas, the president who'd strengthened Brazil's links with America while championing samba as a way of promoting a new national identity, died while still in office in 1954. He shot himself in the heart after demands for his resignation, following a corruption scandal in his government. Less than a year later, another funeral for Carmen Miranda, who died in Hollywood, aged just 46. Her body was flown to Rio, where a million people followed her coffin. The unlikely duo of Carmen Miranda and President Vargas had not always found favor within Brazil for their musical ideas, but between them, they transformed the international image of Brazil and the Rio music scene by promoting samba and carnival. During the final years of Vargas's rule, the carnival celebrations became ever more flamboyant and attracted tourists as well as supporters of the rival samba schools to the parades, judged not just on the music and costumes, but on the themes and ideas they portray. The Rio Carnival has become increasingly commercialized, but remains a focus for major composers and singers. Like the flamboyant Elsa Suarez, who became associated with Mosidaji, a samba school situated in the neighborhood where she grew up, and which she praises in one of her best known songs. Samba schools have become an important part of Rio's musical life, not just as music clubs that compete at carnival time but as recreation and social centers with strong links to the local community. Each school still inspires fervent support. Everybody loves the show. It's a wonderful parade. Great composers have passed through the great samba schools. Every Brazilian has a favorite samba school, like a football team. We all have our favorites. do Rio de Janeiro tem um grande significado, porque o Carnaval do Rio de Janeiro tem enredo, tem história. O Carnaval do Rio de Janeiro não é você pular. O Carnaval do Rio de Janeiro ele tra ele traz uma... conta uma história do Brasil.
President Vargas gave Rio the carnival for which the city became world famous. But less than two years after his death, a new form of samba emerged that reflected a new political era in Brazil and would bring Rio even more international exposure and prove to be Brazil's most successful musical export. This was Bossa Nova. Se você insiste em classificar This was cool, futuristic new music for a confident new era. President Juscelino Kubitschek set out to transform Brazil with an ambitious program of public works that included the construction of a new federal capital, Brasilia, and the promise of 50 years' development in five. Kubitschek would later be accused of causing rampant inflation, but for many Brazilians, this seemed like a golden age. He was a very open-minded man. You know, before that we had a tremendous dictatorship by Vargas, who was a, was a, a, a complete idiot, you know. And, uh, and when Juscelino came to the, to, to the government of Brazil, everything expanded. It was a time when Brazil seemed to succeed at everything. A country obsessed with football won the World Cup for the first time in 1958, partly thanks to a young player called Pele. Bossa Nova, the new way, reflected this new optimism and appealed to Brazil's growing urban middle class. It was influenced by Western classical music, jazz, and by samba cansal. Samba era mais ou menos uma coisa assim. I would say Bossa Nova is a kind of soft samba, maybe played a little bit slower, just with the guitars, simpler, and very light singing, soft singing and soft guitars doing the rhythm. Not a lot of drums like the big samba schools, maybe just a few percussions or just brushes. <laughs> I always call the bossa nova the, the, the discreet charm of bourgeoisie, the, the refinement of the melody, of the lyric, of the interpretation, of the orchestration. So bossa nova was something that came from the middle class for the middle class. Bossa nova was dominated by three key figures, starting with a singer and guitarist from Bahia, João Gilberto. When I first heard João Gilberto, it was like enlightenment for me. You know, it was like an incredible revelation of everything, of aesthetic criteria, and deep emotions, and most of all, hope in Brazil. <laughs> I think my father changed Brazilian music, if I can say that. I think changed the Brazilian music also in the map. It's really about reinventing. And uh, I see some, my, sometimes my father 